Welcome to Module 5 of the Stucco Manufacturers Association's training videos. This is the last module for the plasters. Upon completion, you'll be able to take a written exam and upon passing that exam, receive a certificate of completion. In this module, we're going to cover the finish coat of stucco. We'll look at the base and mesh materials that are used as a crack suppression systems. This module will also cover decorative foam shapes used as surrounds for windows, doors, cornices, and coins. We'll look at smooth coat cement finish stucco. This is a growing trend in the industry and owners pay extra for quality smooth coat stucco. We'll show you tips on how to make crack resistant stucco and meet owners expectations. The final part on the plastering section will be on patching. We'll show you how to properly patching techniques and provide some tips. Having this knowledge can, and skill can increase the use of stucco and make you a more valuable employee. In Module 4, we left off with the completion of the brown coat. The brown coat in a three coat stucco assembly completes the base coat. The final or finish coat is applied to a sound dry and cured base coat. The brown coat should be moist cured to ensure it is of sufficient strength. The brown coat must set seven days by code before applying the finish coat. We talked about the importance of damp curing in module four, and this cannot be understated. But how can a plaster or even a building inspector tell if the plaster brown coat is damp cured sufficiently? The SMA recommends the nail test. This has been done for several decades by countless sitting building officials who are familiar with stucco. The nail test can be done with a simple nail. If it is hard, it is moist cured enough and no further testing is needed. Consider there's no requirement for a compression test on any exterior siding. If the brown coat is hard and been on for seven days, it is ready for finish coat. Now is a good time to recap one coat stucco. This is because one coat stucco does not have to wait the seven days for curing prior to applying the finish coat. We know many plasters do not like using one coat stucco and we know why. The reason is the plasters lose the advantage or the absorption of the scratch coat that can help make the brown coat nicer to work and easier to float. However, there are advantages to using a one coat stucco and you should be open minded and understand the benefits go beyond simply not having to wait seven days to apply the finish. All exteriors are requiring more use of foam under the siding. One coat stucco was one of the first systems to develop this. One coat stucco on foam is 100% code compliant, has extra drainage provisions, and can accept a finish just like a three coat stucco. The SMA recommends attending one coat stucco programs hosted by SMA manufacturers. One coat stucco can be done over a variety of sheathings, but rigid foam is the most common one. All laths can be used as allowed by the manufacturer. The rigid foam should be specifically designed for one coat stucco. This will include a tongue and groove top edge to help keep water out and drainage channels to help incidental water to escape faster. The one coat systems require a single layer of water resistant barrier, building paper, house wrap, or approved fluid applied product when drainage channels or a drainage map are incorporated into the system. The installation is virtually the same as for a three coat stucco with shingle fashion layering of flashing and building paper being critical. Hard coat stucco is a relatively thin, brittle material, and like all cement products, is subject to the occasional crack when subjected to stress. It is a fact that framed walls will flex and be more impacted to high winds than masonry walls. This means cracking is a real concern for hard coat stucco. Fortunately, when good practices are followed, such as using good materials, substrate preparation, and preparing and mixing the application of plaster properly, most cracking is only hairline in nature and fairly limited in scope. 
yet some owners want a crack-free stucco. SMA manufacturers produce a lamina, or what is called a base and mesh system, that can provide a thin, flexible membrane. This lamina is proven to greatly reduce cracks in stucco. These crack suppression systems are optional additions to a standard hard coat stucco. They can be used on one coat, three coat, or even over an existing stucco finish. There are two basic types of skin coat available. The cement polymer modified cement based or a non-cementitious or NCB based coat. The cement based material comes in bags while the non-cement based NCB coating comes in buckets. The non-cementitious skim coat is designed for going over existing acrylic finishes, glass matte sheathings, and painted surfaces. The bagged or cement based is designed for conventional brown or base coats. It is very important to understand that some base coats are not going to work over some substrates or some finishes will not work over some base coats. Talk to your SMA material dealer or manufacturer's representative to make sure that all materials are compatible. Failure is very costly. Application of the base and mesh system must be done correctly to become an effective crack suppression system. The base and mesh system starts with pre-dampening the base coat of cement plaster with water. The plaster then applies a skim coat of polymer rich cement to the wall in a thin even layer. The skim coat should be approximately 1 16th to 1 8th inch thick. It is critical to apply the base coat to the wall first, then trowel the mesh into the fresh wet base coat. Using a sticky type mesh and applying base over the mesh is a recipe for disaster. The mesh must be embedded into the polymer enriched cement to function. A skilled plasterer will learn to use his trowel to cut the mesh to manageable sizes to apply. The mesh is typically a standard 4.5 ounce mesh similar to used in most EIFS systems. The plaster starts by pressing the top of the mesh into the wet skim coat. It is important to assure that there is a minimum 2 inch overlap at all edges and ends. The plaster then trowels the top to ensure the mesh stays in place and then trowels the mesh into the base coat. It is recommended to start near the center and trowel outwards. This will help you remove all wrinkles in the mesh. The process is repeated until the wall is completely covered with a mesh embedded into the skim coat with mesh overlaps at all edges and ends. Pressing the mesh in at the top to hold it in place and then troweling the mesh into the wet base coat. It is important to remove all wrinkles and foreign objects that can prevent a flat and well embedded mesh system. After the mesh is embedded, it will probably be necessary to go back and apply a second coat to cover the mesh completely. You should not see any mesh color or a noticeable mesh pattern when finished. For cement finish coats, it is recommended to lightly float the final skim coat. This will provide a slightly roughened surface for a good key for cement finish coats. No visible mesh color is easy to understand, but what is noticeable mesh pattern and why is it important? This skim coat has neither a color or any visible mesh pattern. The other skim coat does have a slight pattern, but it is not noticeable, so it is also okay. If the pattern is noticeable in the skim coat, it will likely be noticeable after the finish coat is applied, particularly if the finish coat is a thin, fine sand finish texture. Flat stucco walls are easy and sometimes considered boring by designers. What is known as decorative features, or we call pop-outs, were traditionally done with framing and wrapping framed members with paper and wire. 
This can still be done and does provide a durable decorative shape. Today, we see more use of the foam shape that is adhered to the brown coat and then coated with a base and mesh. The development of foam shapes for stucco has been a huge gain for the industry. These foam shapes can be surrounds, coins, belly bands, or even cornices. There are two methods for installation of the shapes. Field fabrication uses raw foam and troweling the mesh onto the foam shape. This becomes a layered process. This layering process also highlights the mesh pattern that is clearly noticeable. This system needed a second coating prior to applying the finish coat. Another option is to have prefabricated foam shapes. These shapes typically come in sections that are adhered to the cured brown coat. They can be cut to fit or mitered and then coated. All joints should be meshed and re-coated. Foam shapes can come in almost any style and may be very detailed. Some can even resemble precast concrete shapes, but are only a fraction of the weight and the cost. This makes stucco more desirable and your skills more marketable. It is important for you to attend manufacturer's training classes to learn how to install some of the newer shapes and products that you may not be familiar with. We all want success. Failures can hurt our collective future. While most stucco is done with a sand finish or some minor texturing, the range of textures is only limited to our imagination and the skill of the plasters. While these look like wood, snow, or other materials, they are cement plaster applied to a metal lath and then shaped, carved, and sculpted to provide a desired shape. This work may seem out of date, but in reality it's growing. They're often called chips. Amusement parks, casinos, and even hotels are looking for specialty cement plaster workers. This chip has been shaped and will use a cement-based paint similar to fog coat to color the gray plaster. Stucco is unique in that not only is there a wide variety of textures, but each plaster and even regions can have slight variations. The most common texture is probably the sand or float finish. The texture is determined mainly by the aggregate or the size of the sand used. The most common for cement finishes is a 1620, which is considered a medium finish, and 2030 for a fine float finish. Lace or Spanish texture was very popular as it is fast to apply and hides imperfections. The Mission or Santa Barbara finish is a smoother finish that incorporates random cat faces. The Machine or Dash finish is a stipple look that is achieved by spraying the finish onto the brown coat. A dash can also be done with a stiff bristle brush called a dash brush. The scraped plaster finish is much more popular in other countries but sometimes seen in the United States. The trowel sweep is a texture that is very rough and popular in some desert areas. A comb texture is done using a scarifier tool. This is the same tool that some use for the scratch coat. Marblecrete is a texture where marble chips are thrown into a bedding coat. This was once a very popular texture on commercial projects. An example of regional variations in stucco textures would be marblecrete. In Florida, marble chips would need to be shipped in from out of state. It turns out that seashells not only appear to look similar to marble chips, but they're readily abundant and thus keeping the cost of stucco down. It is required to wash the shells to remove all the salts and loose sands. This can be done at the job site using a metal lath as a kind of strainer. The bedding is typically a white cement plaster that the shells are thrown into. The shells or marble chips should then be tamped into the plaster to make a level plane and secure the shells or chips. Sand or float finish is a very popular texture. This can be done with an acrylic or a cement finish. With cement sand finish, the bag of base is either gray or white. 
base 10 or 100 is white, while base 20 or 200 is gray. For integral color, you simply add one color pack to one bag of base. You must make sure that the base is the correct base for the color selected. Mix the material thoroughly. For a sand finish, apply with a hawk and trowel to a pre-dampened brown coat. The top edges should be cut in first to keep a clean, nice edge. Then trowel the skim coat over the entire wall, keeping the thickness as uniform as possible. Cement finishes are typically applied using a trowel, but may also be applied to a dampened brown coat using a red rubber float. This is a pretty common method of application in Southern California. Due to the finish coat being cement based, this th finish will take up or lose mixed water fairly quickly. To achieve a uniform sand or float finish requires a frequent addition of water to the applied cement. This can be done using a dash brush or a special spray pump or in high production situations a special misting nozzle available at plaster material yards. Once properly wet, the plaster uses a green sponge float to bring out the sand texture. It is important to make sure that you're not just moving the sand on the surface as this will result in unsightly swirl marks under certain lighting conditions. The floating motion is circular with even pressure and using the correct amount of water to bring out the desired sand texture. This is a skill and requires practice with a light touch and understanding correct timing. Failure to bring the sand to the surface with a cement stucco finish will often result in imperfections. If we look closely at this sand finish, we can see the right to left lines in the sand finish. This is a result of only moving the sand on the top or the surface of the stucco. The wall probably looked very good at the time of application. However, when low incident light or what we call critical lighting hits the wall, the imperfections just under the surface can now be seen. An example is this wall that looks very good with reflective lighting, but when critical light hits the wall, small imperfections become highlighted. Some plasters have opted to double coat cement sand finishes and walls that are very visible. This is an option. The second coat can help. However, fully floating the sand on a float finish is a more traditional and skilled option. It takes time to learn this floating procedure as sand finish is a plaster journeyman skill. Sand finish texture is very common with acrylic finished products. Acrylics can use color vials or come pre-blended in the pail. Application is with a steel trowel applied as a thin tight coat over a cement base coat. A primer will help with coverage and workability. Unlike cement finishes that use a sponge float, acrylic finishes use a hard plastic float. The motion and pressure is similar to using a green sponge, and the timing is just as critical. However, you're not bringing out the sand, but rather getting the sand to align and roll into place. A sand finish with an acrylic finish is easier to achieve than it is with a cement. The color will also be more uniform. There are many ways to cut corners on stucco or stucco-like systems. One is to apply the finish coat directly to a sheathing with no mesh or base coat. While your employer may direct you to do this, and you should follow the directions, you have the right to note that this is not an industry approved practice and certainly will likely violate any manufacturer's warranty, but then proceed as directed. With the wide variety of textures for stucco, it should be no surprise the tools used to create these effects are equally wide ranging. For example, the dash finish is typically done by machine. On large project, this would be a stator tube pump as discussed in module four. 
For smaller projects, the handheld hopper with an air compressor works well. With the handheld hopper, the first coat is typically applied by hand tool and then the texture is added by the machine. A dash brush can also work for very small projects. The striations or lines created on this stucco finish are typically done with a plaster comb or scarifier. In the cases where unusual patterns are desired, custom made tools are possible. Smooth trowel stucco is highly desirable. It is the look, the feel, and it matches so many architectural styles. The problem is owner's expectations, limitations on materials, and often owners unwilling to pay the price to meet their desired expectations. Two of the biggest complaints are cracks and unevenness. We covered the base in mesh lamina, and that can help with unsightly cracks. We now will show you tips on how to make your angles and corners look straighter. We can also help you even out the color. However, it should be known, the darker the color, the greater the odds are of uneven color variations. We first must start with a good flat brown coat. It should be hard floated and angles cut neat and straight. It will not be possible to straighten a wall or corners with a cement finish. While not required, it is highly recommended to have a base and mesh applied to the brown coat as we discussed earlier. Next, use a material specifically made for smooth finished stucco work. These products have ingredients to help make troweling easier and the surface smoother. The first issue to consider is the size of your crew. Smooth trowel stucco work will highlight imperfections and this includes scaffold lines. For the best looking finishes, you will need to probably make sure you have enough workers to have seamless joints at the scaffold. This can mean working above or under other plasters. Once the base and mesh is cured, a bonder should be applied just ahead of the plasters. The bonder serves several functions. It helps even or minimize the suction of the base coat, provides more working time, and can help provide a more uniform color finish. You should use a bonder recommended by the stucco manufacturer. The first coat is troweled on. To prevent wavy angles and corners, it is recommended to fill the angle and then use a straight edge to create and set a clean line. The use of the straight edge to establish this straight line will greatly help you after you apply your second or the troweling coat. As inside and outside angles are filled with cement stucco, some corners should be done using an angle tool as shown. There are both inside and outside tools and they come in a variety of styles. These are the most common. For radius corners, try to apply an even amount of material to create a smooth and even radius as possible. Radius corners can be difficult to keep even and attractive. For smooth coat, it's highly recommended to walk the radius corners before plastering and even before applying the bonder. This is when the repairs and fixes are best done. In this case, the plasterer used the finish coat and mixed in an accelerant to speed the setting, then shaved it to meet the radius to have a nice smooth corner. The SMA produces many technical papers to help designers and plasters with expectations and helpful tips on plastering. The first coat is allowed to get firm before applying the second or finish coat. Many will use a brown or hard float to knock down trowel lines and slightly roughen the surface of the first coat of smooth plaster. This provides a good base for the second coat. Timing is critical. The first or undercoat must be what the plaster is called green. It is firm but not set. We can think of it as a cushion for the second and final coat. This cushion will absorb troweling lines. 
timing cannot be overstated. Some crews use a small amount of accelerant cement in the first coat to help speed up this process. On the final coat, using the correct material with limited amounts of water and the bonding agent allows the plaster to trowel the cement smooth and not overwork the finish. You should be deliberate and efficient to avoid over troweling. Cold joints must be avoided at all costs. A good steel trowel with a skilled hand is needed to do the smooth trowel stucco work. Some plasters have found other tools useful, such as the plastic spreaders used in auto body work. They can help with small areas. The smooth coat plaster has additives that produce what we call fat. This is the cream of the plaster with no aggregates and is used to fill small imperfections. Over troweling an area can have too much fat on the surface and lead to what is known as alligator cracking. Colors for cement finish come in a powder form. If the cement finish uses ground aggregate as opposed to a 20-30 sand mix, this will help reduce shrinkage cracks in the finish coat but completely blending all the color can now become a challenge. To help better blend powdered colors, they can be made liquid by pre-blending with water and then adding this to the mix. Not all smooth plaster is perfectly smooth, flat, or even. Some designers like what the industry likes to call a hump and bump texture. These undulations can be in the finish, but are typically done in the brown coat. The Santa Barbara or Mission finish is another smooth finish that incorporates purposeful imperfections, or what we call cat faces. They are created by applying a second coat over the first coat with larger openings. Then as you trowel the finish, you close in those voids, creating a distinct kind of reverse texture. The cat faces will be irregular in shape and should be randomly staged, but consistent, making these textures look attractive requires some practice. Acrylic finished coats are very popular and can also be done in a variety of textures, including smooth coat. Each manufacturer has unique properties and you should seek out training from that manufacturer on their specific product line. While typically designed for EVEs, most of these finishes can be applied to properly prepared stucco base coats. Painting stucco is an option. Paint can be applied to acrylic or cement finishes. The SMA has published a technical paper to help designers, owners, contractors with decisions such as timing. Cement is high in alkalinity. Most paints do not react well to high alkaline cements. Alkalinity is referred to as a pH number with seven being considered neutral. Cement plaster generally loses its alkalinity within the first week or two. The SMA recommends pH be at an 8 before painting. The SMA also prefers paints be vapor permeable. This means the paint can breathe. Elastomerics do a great job at hiding cracks, but they can be a rubberized coating that can seal in moisture. If water finds a way in, and it typically does, the moisture wants to escape. If it cannot escape as a vapor, it can travel down and eventually cause the rubber coating to blister. The SMA recommends careful selection of paint coatings for stucco. Cement finish is economical to apply. One issue tends to be color inconsistencies. The SMA cement finish coat manufacturers produce a product called fog coat. This is a cementitious paint made specifically for colored cement finishes. Fog coat can even out the colors and be used to blend in discolored patches. The garden type pump sprayer works best. The bag of fog coat is the base and you'll need to blend a color pack with water. The mixture is then strained into the sprayer. It should be noted that to make a color lighter, adding water will not make this happen you are simply putting on less of the wrong tinted material. You will need to add more base. 
The same is true for a darker tone. You need to add more colorant. One big advantage to stucco is that it can be patched. For openings, provide a lath or secure backing in the opening. It's also recommended that the edges of the patch be rough or jagged for a better grip with the new plaster. The area to be patched should be as dust free as possible. This is because dust can act as a bond breaker. A bonding agent is not required, but it's also not a bad idea. You can use cement finish to fill the void. If you add what is called luminite or fondue, this is a setting cement accelerator. The more fondue or luminite added, the faster the set. After filling the void, scrape back around the edges to allow room for the new finish coat. Feather in the new finish and texture to match. This concludes Module 5 and the SMA series on lathing and plastering. As your host, I want to thank you for watching this series, and I want you to know the SMA staff is here to help the industry and you. If you should want to receive a training card to verify comprehension, please go to the SMA website for a test. Supervisors can now move on to Module 6.